this lesson, we're going to look at the basic functionality to add and remove roles and features from Windows Server 2012. So as you can see here, I have Server Manager open, and from the Manage option, I can say Add Roles and Features or Remove Roles and Features. Now I'm actually running this from a Windows 8 machine. So one of the big changes in Windows Server 2012 for Server Manager is not only the ability to manage multiple machines at once, but also I can add and remove roles and features remotely, which was not possible in Windows Server 2008 R2. So I select Add Roles and Features. I get an initial welcome type screen. I say, is it a role-based or remote desktop services installation? So the RDS scenario is very specific for VDI or session virtualization. For every other role or feature, we're going to use the role-based or feature-based installation option. Now I'm going to cover these in a lot more detail as we actually look at the individual components of Windows Server 2012 and how they are installed. So notice I can select a server from the server pool. So all of my servers are available. With the exception of any Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2008 R2 servers. Although I can manage Windows Server 2008 and Windows Server 2008 R2 from the Windows Server 2012 Server Manager, provided they have Windows Management Framework 3.0 installed, I cannot remotely add or remove roles or features. So I can select the server that I wish to add the role or feature to, and then select that role or feature. Notice also, rather than installing to a server, I can select a virtual hard drive. So I can actually select a Windows Server 2012 VHD. So this could be an offline virtual machine, for example. It could be a VHD that's been copied from a template that I wish to add roles and features to before I spin that up as part of a virtual machine. So I can offline add roles and features. But we'll continue with the server option. We can select the roles that are available. And depending on the role I select, there may also be initial configuration and additional components such as administration tools that would be required. So here you can see DNS server is going to have some configuration options. I can select the features I wish to install. Then you go through configuration and you have that confirmation. Notice if a restart is required, I can check this box and then it will automatically reboot the server if required. So I'm going to cancel this. Likewise, exactly the same process is used to remove a role or feature. I select the server. Now, one thing I cannot do is perform actions on multiple servers at the same time. I can only select one server, both for this addition and for the removal of roles and features. So I can never, for example, hold down control and try and select multiple machines. It will not let me. There's only one machine at a time. And now it will go through what's installed on that machine and let me uninstall the various features I want both roles and of course the features. You will hear me say features often and also in the PowerShell, it's a fairly generic term. So although the word feature is used, it actually can relate to installing a role as well. So I can unselect something, next, confirm to actually do the remove. And once again, I can say restart. Now if I cancel this out, I can do the same thing from PowerShell. So I'm actually gonna jump to a local server now and I could do this remotely as well but I have the integrated scripting environment here. So I can, for example, say get Windows features. And it's gonna show me all the features and it's gonna show me if they're installed or not. So look at the checkbox. Now from here, I can actually install a feature. So I could actually say install Windows feature. For example, I could say the XPS viewer. And you'll notice here I have two columns. One is the friendly name. And then the actual name I need is the actual feature name. So again, it's saying Windows feature, but some of these are roles, some of them are features. So all of the ones here, these are all roles, but we still use the install Windows feature PowerShell commandlet, which can be confusing. I could say restart if required, and I'm gonna say what if. So what if means run this command, but don't actually make any changes. It's just gonna tell me what it would do if I perform that command. So that would have then installed that XPS viewer feature on this machine. Now I can do this remotely on boxes. So I can actually pass it a computer name. So I could say computer name, savdal hyper v02, so a remote box. And then again, that would have been successful on that remote machine. But even from here, I cannot target multiple boxes simultaneously. But let's say I did want to install this feature on multiple servers in one command. What I can do is I can basically take this command 
I would take out the computer name. And I'm going to cover this in future lessons, but I can say invoke command. And this is going to become a script block. Install the feature. And I'm still going to use the what if, so I don't actually want to make this change for real. And then I can say the computer names. So I'm going to say perform this on Sabdel Hyper V01, Sabdel Hyper V02, Sabdel DC01. And what this would do is actually send these commands to each of the three machines. So I would now install these roles or features on all three boxes. Likewise, I can actually uninstall Windows features. So if I have a Windows feature that's installed, and again, I do mean role as well, I can use the uninstall Windows feature. So again, if we're ever not sure, get command, now, Windows feature. So we can see the uninstall. Now, one final point I wanted to mention was something called features on demand that was introduced in Windows Server 2012. So typically, when I uninstall a Windows feature, it never actually makes any changes to the disk in terms of uninstalling the feature from the physical disk footprint, i.e. the amount of disk space it takes up. When we install Windows Server 2012, all of the roles and features are copied to the hard disk. And this is why when we install a Windows feature, we don't have to insert media. It's already on the disk in our side-by-side -side assembly folder, or WinSSX. So if we actually go and look at our file system under Windows, we'll see a WinSSX folder. And this is essentially where everything is copied during the installation. And then when I install Windows features, it's actually pulled out of here and linked in the native file system. Now, there is an exception to that. If I install a server core installation at installation time, when I'm actually installing the operating system, it will not install the management infrastructure or the graphical shell to the hard drive. So it does actually give you a reduced footprint. But then what happens if you did then select to add the user interface, the management infrastructure or graphical shell? It still doesn't prompt you for media. And this is using features on demand functionality. What's happening behind the scenes is Windows is going out to Windows Update, what's traditionally used for patching, and pulling down all the components, all the files it needs to install the management infrastructure or the graphical shell. Now, I can actually specify my own location. So if I have, for example, a WIM file or a share containing the System32 of another server, I can point my machine to that when I run the install Windows feature command. So I can do a slash source or dash source, if it's DISM, and say this is the location I want you to pull the files from. I can also use group policy and under computer configuration, policies, administrative templates, system, there's a specify settings for optional component installation and component repair. If I double click that and enable it, I can actually pass it a location to where I want my machines to always pull down new components that aren't locally on the hard disk. So as you can see here, the format is WIM colon slash slash a server, the share, and then that WIM file and the image number within the WIM. So this is assuming you have a WIM file, you've maintained it, you're keeping it patched. You can then have your servers automatically use that WIM file. So it's a more advanced option, but just know your machines don't have to be able to contact the internet on Windows Update they can actually pull it down directly from a local share you have in your environment, and you can push that through group policy. You can also manually remove things from the disk footprint. So we talked before, for example, about the uninstall Windows feature, and you can select a feature to uninstall. So if I look here at the various options, one of them, for example, might be, hey, I actually want to uninstall the server GUI shell. Now, what I can actually add to this is I can say remove. So this is now actually going to remove it from the disk footprint. Again, I'm doing what ifs. It won't actually make this change. But what this would actually do is now delete all those components from the disk footprint. And so now if I wanted to add this again in the future, it would just pull it down from Windows Update or it would pull it down from that location I specified. So this is not something you should typically do. It's not recommended to use the remove when uninstalling Windows features. You want to leave them on the file system so they're available easily. And if you install service packs, they would be patched automatically. But if, for example, I had a scenario of hundreds of virtual machines all running server core and just IIS, well, then maybe the additional three or four gigabytes of the management infrastructure in the graphical shell does not make sense. I'd rather save that space. So that's when you could start using remove to remove things from the physical disk footprint and reduce the amount of disk space we need.